The word not good enough cross everybody a little bit different. I've been hearing it all my life. I got ADHD and dyslexia and I was a very average athlete. So I've heard I'm not good enough in many situations, which sort of helped me find my niche, but also find out what I could bring to the table differently in my preparation. But when we're talking to patients, clients, and athletes, and we find something and it's not good enough, there's a friction there, a friction that some of us are just a little bit too abrupt with, and some of us never even confront the issue. And if we don't get the not good enough off things that determine your outcome with your clients, patients, and athletes, you're not gonna have the outcome, outcomes you want. So to me, the word functional should stand for good enough, meaning, isn't it uh, ironic that we hear in the way fitness services and health services and products and things that we can get are designed to optimize you? Well, you can purchase optimization in any domain of your life. You can do things to upgrade your sleep, your nutrition, your exercise, but the whole point is, if that's not your weakest link, and that's not your not good enough, I don't see how optimization of one thing changes the weakest link. So the very first thing we gotta do in the not good enough world is point the goals at that weakest link because it controls the rest of the system and everybody's got maybe a different weak link. So when, when we got into movement screening, the very first thing we had to do is not relate a movement screen to sports, particular activity, or an age group. We said, what is the signature of human movement that's not good enough? How do we get there? Well, people who move like this don't end up in a better place next year and they end up in a horrible place 10 years from now. That's that forecast that vital signs give us, that medical testing give us, that even fitness tests give us. They give us a predictive value. But the first thing you gotta do when you screen is just sort what's coming at you. So when we started movement screening, we found people who couldn't cover the minimum marks of a movement pattern. If you're not squatting this deep, if you're not lunging this symmetrical, if you're not stepping this high, there's gonna be a problem. We don't know what it is. You could either potentially have more risk toward injury, but you might not. But I promise you, you will not do as well as somebody who doesn't have this problem long term, meaning the same thing that could set you up for risk is going to inhibit your learning and your adaptation. Now, we have a lot of things that are good enough, okay? So we wind up with a pass and a fail and when we're working with people, it's, it's hard for us to tell them they just failed. But if you are immediately there with a solution and a feedback loop to say, hey, now I'm gonna get some stuff going here and let's keep watching this. But a lot of people don't wanna hear this and let me tell you how I know. We have a thing called a participation trophy. And a lot of people are doing functional exercise for a year and they still can't pass a basic functional screen. If you were doing eye exercises for a year, I'd like to think the eye chart could validate what you've done. So we've got to have a feedback loop for good enough. But science doesn't stop there. That's all we do for the client. But there's two ways to fail a movement screen. The movement can be painful or it can just be unacceptable. Too tight, too weak, off balance. Those are two different things because I don't necessarily know that this person needs exercises just yet, but we already know if you don't have pain, some of the things that'll budge your movement patterns. And we also know which movement pattern to start first with, believe it or not. Over here, acceptable. Would you believe that a large majority of the pro athletes and special operators in the military are more acceptable than exceptional when it just comes to movement screens. Why? Because they beat on their bodies hard, they have high fitness standards, and accidents happen. But believe it or not, they retain good enough flexibility, good enough strength, balance, reaction time, and posture to do the job. Now, we've always gotta have room for exceptional because we learn from that. The people that are exceptional either post different numbers or the same numbers, but we've got to separate that out. So between fail and pass, we have a distribution of four. Right here, if you're painful in a simple movement screen and we didn't know that before, I need to know more about this. If you're simply unacceptable, you can start repatterning that shape right now, reorganizing that body right now. If you're acceptable, let's just watch it because that ain't the weakest link. And if you're exceptional, consider yourself having a buffer. So maintain what you got, 
but look somewhere else for your improvement because you've already really maxed out the stats that say you could be better right here. So this is where I think a lot of people mess up. A screen distributes the parts of a person into these categories and it distributes groups of people in these categories but it won't explain why so and so is not losing weight and so and so has low back pain it will simply identify that maybe we need to quarantine this and figure it out by making us aware of the weakest link protecting the fact that it doesn't get worse and then looking at corrective strategies to get there Unacceptable is easy. You ain't got to deal with pain. Go right for it. But this actually becomes the fitness priority because this is a bigger drain on training time, reaction time, and everything else than any problem over here in conditioning. So screens organize your day and prioritize what you need to test. Test give you the granular and incremental improvement and validate exactly what we, here's why you failed. The assessment is more than a test because that's taking all this together and deciding what is our first primary action. And so I can't get to any assessment I've ever done without a screen that tells me I need a granular test and without a test that confirms my suspicion. But every person is different. They have different time and resources. So my solutions may vary, but my outcomes are consistent.